man, am I ever excited for today's session. I wanna take a few minutes today and share some ideas on time alignment and specifically how it relates to parallel processing, a technique that pretty much all of us use in the studio where we take a malt or a copy of a track and we process that malt or copy very, very differently from the original and then ultimately take that process signal and add it or fold it back in with the original sound, a parallel process. Well, this is something that I get up to pretty much every day in the studio, like many of you. And for today's example, I've got a typical parallel process setup where what I'm doing today is I'm looking to extend the bottom end of a mix where I just wasn't feeling enough weight in the bottom. I wanted a thing to just be deeper in the bottom and sort of extend lower. So as I often do, I'll set up a parallel process to create this effect by combining a couple of different plugins to create a parallel process that's nothing but warm bottom end. I'm talking like stuff below 70 hertz sort of thing. And in my own experience, I find myself combining all kinds of different bass generating plugins and equalizers and breaking rules, not using them as they were designed to be used, whether we're talking about Waves Max Bass, where we're adding harmonics and tricking the brain into thinking there's a, a lower frequency there, or whether we're literally creating new and low frequencies with something like a subharmonic synth. Well, yeah, I find that I just literally have to try all kinds of trickery before I come up with the right combo. Well, this can be an incredibly effective way to tune the bottom end of a mix, not just rescue it. In some cases, you can absolutely rescue a mix that's lacking bottom end, but more often than not, I'm not really using this to rescue something as much as I am to just shape the bottom in a way that translates better to across the board, across all kinds of monitor systems. Yeah, this can be a very powerful tool for defining your bottom end, but I promise you, if you're going to go down this trail, you have to pay attention to time alignment. It's not enough that we just turn on delay compensation on in our DAW. That's critical to make a parallel process happen, but I find that when generating bass or running some of these parallel processes, the process itself takes time. Let me demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. Well, just for reference, let's have a quick listen to the demo I've got up. That's a fun track from our most recent Radio Gator Jam. Well, let's break this down a little bit. I've got my original mix feeding out of bus 31 and 32. I'm picking that up on two auxiliaries. That's how I'm creating my parallel here. And then those two auxiliaries are then feeding into one more auxiliary where I've got my limiter. And then finally, I'm routed to my layback track from there. I'm gonna go ahead and mute the original mix. And I'm just gonna let my sub parallel feed into my layback track and record a segment of that. Let's do that. All right, so let's take that recording and drop it down to a new track and go ahead and make a new take here. And then we'll do the opposite. I'll mute my sub parallel and we'll record a segment of just the mix all by itself. Let's immediately go in and take a look at what we just recorded. And boom, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You can see clearly that that sub parallel is lagging. That thing is delayed a little bit. And oh man, this can create havoc in your mix world. If you're ever sitting at your console just wondering why a mix isn't coming together, you gotta pay attention to time alignment. This stuff can absolutely save you a lot of frustration in your mix and it can have things really come together in a good way quickly. So. What's my solution for this? Well, of course, there's a couple of different solutions, right? We could go ahead and record that kind of process delay and then go ahead and grab that audio region and shift it and kind of move it back into place. A much more effective means for me and, and a way that allows me to do it in real time is to just understand that there's gonna be a lag in that processing time for my bass parallel. 
I just simply insert a time adjusting plugin so that I can delay the original mix so that the transients line up with that sub process that's being a little bit delayed, right? It's no different than back in the old days working on a multi-track. We used to mix off the repro head. If we ever had to do some kind of pre-delay thing or something, we would just take the signal, the track from the sync head it was called, before the playback head. That allowed us as an engineer to pull off the sync head, run that vocal, if that's what it was, through a delay or something, and, and then use that delay to help place that vocal against the repro head. No different here, I'm just inserting a real-time delay so that I can delay the direct signal back so that it lands with the process signal. All right, so I've got a time adjusting plugin up. Well, how much delay time do I need to enter? Typically, I'll just use a visual reference. I'll go ahead and select the gap between my two transients. In this case, we're looking at about 1,215 samples. So in my time adjusting plugin, I can literally enter 1,215 samples, both channels. So we're just gonna repeat the process and record a segment of the direct side of this mix, but now we're delaying that mix back so that it actually lands and is, is lined up with the transients on this sub parallel that I've got. Check it. Now we can go in and zoom in on any one of these transients yeah, there we go. Now I'm looking at the original mix and that sub parallel and they're all lined up. Those transients make sense. You know, as a recording and mix engineer, I strive to not be using visual references. I try everything I can to use nothing but my ears in the studio, but this is one area that I rely heavily on visuals. This is something that is voodoo almost. I mean, we all know how tricky it is to get the bottom end right in a mix, right? That little bit of lag I showed earlier, that stuff can totally mess you up in your mix. We're striving so hard to get our mix slamming and to have everything lined up. And then we add a process that introduces lag into the bottom end. So now we've got this beautifully punchy mix and in between in the holes, we've just filled it up with some random low end or something. And once again, I think that often we, as engineers, we can get tricked when we hear that kind of lag feeling like it's correct or it's warming things up or it's changing the sound. Yeah, it's messing the sound up most of the time. And in my experience, you take the time to properly time align stuff and your mix just comes together a lot easier. So I hope this inspires you to get time aligned. Thank you for sitting in on today's session.